good day to the conference organizers, attendees, colleagues, and audience. Thank you to AMS for allowing me the opportunity to present in the conference, Local Cultures, Global Spaces. My name is Sadia Gheye, and I am a lecturer at the University of Johannesburg in South Africa. I am positioned in the Faculty of Art Design and Architecture, and my focus is in interior design. My primary areas of interest and research are sustainable urban regeneration through interior design, urban interiority, adaptive reuse and revitalization, sense of place, placemaking through interior design, and I'm also engaged in my PhD study. My paper is titled, Thinking Inside the Box, Inner City Regeneration Through Interior Design Placemaking Strategies in a Creative Cluster. This research paper investigates the role of interior design in promoting a creative sense of place within inner city regeneration, particularly in commercial spaces situated in creative clusters. <clears throat> Utilizing a multiple case study approach, the research explores the significance of interior design as a regeneration strategy in the city of Johannesburg, South Africa. The study seeks to understand the process of placemaking within creative clusters in inner cities through an interpretive paradigm. It examines four interior commercial spaces located in the Mabinang Precinct, the 12 Decades Johannesburg Art Hotel, the Blackenese Wine and Sushi Bar, Unknown Union, and Cornerstone Cafe. While existing literature recognizes the efficacy of creative clusters in inner city revitalization, this study sheds light on the underappreciated role of interior design in creative placemaking. Despite the evident success of interior design in the case studies, it remains largely unacknowledged as a contributor to inner city regeneration. The findings underscore the critical significance of interior design in shaping the character of commercial spaces and its potential to inform successful regeneration strategies in inner cities. This research offers valuable insights to researchers, urban planners, developers, architects, and interior designers, enhancing their understanding of interior commercial design and placemaking processes. Furthermore, the study provides recommendations for promoting and sustaining regeneration in Johannesburg Central Business District, contributing to the ongoing discourse on inner city regeneration within the current socio-political landscape. This knowledge can serve as a foundation for future efforts to leverage interior design as a pivotal tool for enhancing creative clusters and advancing inner city regeneration. The Mabinang Precinct in Johannesburg, South Africa, acclaimed for urban regeneration, thrives due to its creative reimagining of existing structures. However, while urban design and architecture receive recognition for this transformation, the role of interior design remains overlooked. This study examines the symbiotic link between specific commercial interiors and the precinct's creative identity within Johannesburg Central Business District. Recognizing these contributions expands the scope of interior design, urging designers <clears throat> to consider influences beyond interior spaces. By acknowledging interior design's impact on creative placemaking, this research aims to foster collaboration among stakeholders in inner city regeneration, ensuring cohesive integration of design solutions into the urban landscape. Conducted within a master's program, the study utilized interpretive methods incorporating diverse data collection and, and, and analysis techniques. The four interior commercial spaces were examined as case studies within the vibrant Mabinang precinct. This exploration seeks to deepen our understanding of sense of place and placemaking, empowering interior designers to envision spaces in a broader context, fostering synergy among diverse role players in urban regeneration. Understanding the creative city approach. Various policy frameworks in South Africa highlight the pivotal role of creative industries in city and community economic growth. Johannesburg stands at the forefront of this development, fostering creative clusters within its inner city and surrounding areas. These clusters, instrumental in inner city regeneration, redefine place by cultivating a create, creative sense that sparks social, communal, and cultural revival. Sense of place, as defined by Christian Norbert Schultz, embodies how individuals interpret and connect with a design space while placemaking deliberately shapes environments for deeper human bonds within the built world. Urban planners and architects have embraced these concepts to transform inner city spaces into vibrant, meaningful environments aiming for healthier communities and enhanced urban life quality. 
Johannesburg's inner city regeneration initiatives modeled after creative clusters and campus projects like the Mabining Precinct and others, seeking to reconcile the city's apartheid legacy with aspirations of global urban standing. The Mabining Precinct, notably spearheaded by private developer Jonathan Libman through Propertuity, represents a paradigmatic property-led creative cluster fostering creative entrepreneurship. Once a zone of derelict industrial spaces, Mabining's revitalization by Libman utilized art and design to repurpose abandoned factories into multifunctional artistic, residential, and commercial hubs, thereby cultivating a distinctive creative atmosphere. This strategy not only regenerated the physical and economic aspects, but also nurtured a vibrant sense of place, contributing significantly to inner city regeneration and community revival. The impact of interior design strategies. John Harbrocken's theories on levels in urban development offers a lens through which the transformation of this inner city area, particularly, particularly the Mabinang precinct, can be analyzed. It's evident that this regeneration initiative primarily operated at the infra level, leaving the urban planning and zoning relatively untouched. The area's historical identity as a mixed-use, light industrial zone remained intact, causing minimal change in the broader urban planning framework. Architectural alterations were modest, with some structures refurbished, others demolished, and a few new container-type buildings added. However, the core transformation unfolded internally, emphasizing adaptive reuse and retrofitting within existing structures rather than large-scale architectural interventions. Specifically, the regeneration of commercial spaces within the precinct focused on repurposing neglected warehouses and factories. This aligns with Harbrocken's theory showcasing the pivotal role of interior design in contributing to Mabinang's success as an inner, re inner city regeneration hub. Embracing interior design in placemaking. Furthermore, Norbrook Schulz's perspective highlights the significance of design in cultivating a distinct sense of place. According to this view, designers craft environments that resonate with users' emotions and behaviors, fostering a meaningful connection. A well-designed space not only attracts users, but also nurtures a strong sense of place, fostering utilization and community engagement. As an interior designer, I resonate deeply with this perspective, seeing interior design as a crucial element in shaping Mabining's creative atmosphere. Despite the acknowledgement of urban design and architecture in discussions about Mabining's creativity, interior design's role remains underrepresented. There is a gap in understanding and documenting how interior design plays a pivotal role in successful placemaking within creative clusters like Mabining. This gap in South African literature presents an opportunity to delve deeper into the significance of interior design in inner city regeneration strategies. Comprehensive insights into interior design's influence could enrich existing knowledge on successful placemaking, offering valuable guidance for future urban regeneration endeavors. The vision for the Mabinang Precinct. The rise of the Mabinang Precinct as a central hub for creativity within Johannesburg's inner city, as revealed through my research in literature and interviews, is truly transformative. It attracts the creative class, elevates the city's image, and regenerates one's derelict areas. The precinct's design, aligning with existing urban structures, fosters a positive city brand crucial for economic growth. Interviewees unanimously recognized Libman's vision, emphasizing its pivotal role in inner city regeneration and nurturing creative entrepreneurship. Observations in Mabining align with Pencholi's placemaking factors, establishing a link between the precinct as a creative cluster and a defined sense of place. It is acclaimed for its inclusive creative environment, reinforcing its world-renowned status. Placemaking in Mabining thrives on strategies such as spatial diversity, authenticity, and attractiveness, integrating existing structures with creative design elements to foster user participation and innovation. Interior design drives this transformation, respecting the precinct's industrial heritage while infusing creative functionality into adaptive reuse. This reuse allows users to interact with history, spurring their creativity, Interior design creates vibrant spaces, attracting locals and tourists, enhancing investments and boosting the local economy. 
This process, essential for a multifunctional creative cluster, involves strategic integration of creativity, flexible spaces, and a sense of place by considering context and materiality. Duba and Naya, interviewers in my study and designers in Mabining, stress interior design's pivotal role in Mabining's growth, attributing its success to attracting known creatives, visible artwork, and repurposing abandoned spaces. The precinct's deliberate design, offering a creatively designed space at affordable rates in a secure and well-maintained environment, fosters a community for creatives. It underscores how the Mabineng Precinct's purposeful exterior and interior design cultivate its distinctive creative sense of place. Mabineng's evolution, driven by interior design's strategic contributions, underscores its success as a thriving creative hub and symbolizes the transformative power of purposeful design in urban regeneration. The implementation of selected commercial spaces the commercial landscape within Mabineng is intricately woven with a unique character and a distinct sense of place. This essence is not haphazard, but rather deliberately curated, fostering a symbiotic relationship between Mabineng's overarching vision and the selected commercial spaces. Libman, the visionary behind Mabineng, meticulously curated these commercial spaces, ensuring they resonated with his vision and nurturing creativity and entrepreneurship. This selectivity engendered a distinctive offering within these spaces, crafting an authentic experience that intimately engaged users, fostering a creative sense of place. Naya highlights the intentional designs of these commercial spaces, fostering a symbiotic relationship with Mabineng's creative essence. Termed an ecosystem or a closed loop, these spaces and the precinct mutually influenced and elevate each other, benefiting not only the creative community, but also the targeted market. This reciprocal relationship underscores the significance of Mabining's creative sense of place in molding these interior commercial spaces. The interior design of these spaces plays a pivotal role in Mabining's external attraction. Naya emphasizes the importance of competent interior design aligned with the precinct's vision and character. Commercial leases mandate an aesthetics clause ensuring interior design harmonizes with Mabining's envisioned sense of place. The four specific commercial spaces within Mabineng that were analyzed shed light on their role in cultivating a creative sense of place through their offerings and character. Analyzing these spaces firsthand suggested how their interior designs contribute to placemaking within the creative cluster. These spaces, alongside Mabineng as a whole, exemplify specific place attributes that stimulate creativity. Their design solutions uniquely captivate users, sustaining immersive experiences and resulting in highly utilized environments, embodying a strong sense of place. This echoes Pancholi's delineation of commercial spaces, facilitating placemaking within creative clusters. This creative placemaking, as identified by Markison and Gadwa in 2010, not only defines atmosphere fears, but also revitalizes surroundings, bolstering economic vitality, public safety, and environmental sustainability. Its impact extends to community regeneration by attracting diverse individuals, locals, and visitors. The strategies in interior design linked to placemaking within creative clusters, as per Pancholi's, um, as per Pancholi's theories, encompass four key components, producing places feature, considering function, manifesting places form, and shaping the space's perceived image to facilitate placemaking. These strategies align with wider contextual influences, contributing to the distinctive character of Mabining's commercial spaces. Employing a multiple data collection strategy aided in comprehending these spaces' designs, qualities, and users', users perspectives. The four commercial spaces deliberately attract the creative class through unique design and authentic experiences. The interior design process imbues these spaces with a significant meaning, character, identity, and human interaction, fostering a relatable yet creative environment. Functionality plays a critical role in the placemaking process within these spaces. Observations demonstrate how the interior design amalgamates practical functionality, industrial quality, and aesthetic innovation, aligning with placemaking methodologies by influential authors like Lorraine Forelli. Each space effectively communicates its purpose and appearance to users, influencing their emotional responses and contributing to a sense of place. Heidegger's theories on embodied placemaking elucidate the interconnectedness of place and the human body within the built environment. 
the interior designers embraced this concept, emphasizing a specific human experience within these selected commercial spaces, thereby enhancing their significance. The physical interior space in each case study was meticulously considered, manifesting place as form. Designers tailored spatial compositions to suit social and individual programs in line with Will Vagden's description, thereby contributing to placemaking within these environments. The designed user experience within these commercial spaces emphasizes character while maintaining a strong link to Mubbening's context, fostering identification among guests and the community. Various design approaches structure spaces for dialogue and reaching users' sense of place and creating sensory connections as posited by Ajay in 2016. Consideration of the context within the design of these interior commercial environments is paramount. Naya notes the adaptive reuse of buildings within Mabaneng, preserving the industrial style while infusing creative functionality tailored to each structure's current purpose. This strategy respects the building's heritage while innovatively layering elements that resonate with the Mabaneng community. In summary, the meticulously curated commercial spaces within Mabaneng exemplify a symbiotic relationship with the precinct's creative vision. Their interior designs contribute significantly to the creation of a distinct sense of place, fostering immersive experiences and fostering community identification within these spaces. The contextual considerations within these designs pay homage to Mabaneng's heritage while innovatively weaving in elements that resonate with its vibrant community. User experience and its influence. The Mabaneng's precinct success pivots on users' experience within its commercial spaces, serving as a linchpin for both attracting visitors and catalyzing inner city regeneration. Essential to the success is the establishment of a distinct sense of place, a pivotal strategy in sculpting a meaningful and engaging user experience. Mabining's creative sense of place not only significantly influences its status as a thriving creative nucleus, but also acts as a magnet for the creative class while strengthening Johannesburg's image as a vibrant hub of creativity. The symbiotic relationship of commercial spaces Strategies aimed at captivating and retaining the creative class highlight the crucial role of purposefully designed environments within creative clusters. Florida in 2002 emphasizes the creative city approach and the creative class as a fundamental driver of urban growth, highlighting the necessity of nurturing and sustaining these clusters to propel inner city regeneration. Gregory in 2016 identifies clusters like Mabaneng, typically developed by private property developers, as particularly successful in attracting and retaining the creative class. Interviews conducted within Mabaneng reaffirmed its appeal among the creative community due to its vibrant diversity and support for design-oriented commercial spaces. The physical attributes within Mabaneng and its commercial spaces significantly contribute to attracting the creative class. These spaces, through their distinct look and feel, foster a sense of meaning, memory, and identity, thereby nurturing a creative sense of place within Mabaneng. Cre crafting distinctive user experiences. Design strategies, as observed and articulated in the interviews, focus on shaping a distinctive user experience. Interior designers keenly aim to understand user behaviors and experiences, crafting spaces that effectively communicate intended context, character, and function. This aligns with Veikla Poldma, Poldma's approach, emphasizing meaningful design elements and a unique user character. The body-space relationship, as articulated by Norbert Schulz, highlights the dynamic sensory interaction between users and spaces. These interactions are dynamic and shaped by personal bodily interactions, temporal elements, and aesthetic encounters. Spaces are not passive. Users dynamically engage with and within them. Leveraging access to users' realities, interior designers consider lived experiences and functional requirements resonating with Abercrombie's concept in 1990. These lived experiences shape dynamic, lived places, imbuing spaces with meaning and value through user engagement. Strategic approaches by interior designers aim to facilitate placemaking within the identified commercial spaces. Spaces are deliberately designed with user experiences at the forefront, structuring environments to encourage social interactions and individual identities, thus integrating user memory and experience to foster a more engaging environment. The distinction between space and place, as highlighted by Madani Poor in 1996, 
underscores the significance of physical environments in holding meaning and value. Observations reveal how these commercial spaces within Mabining effectively promote user identification and meaningful experiences, aligning seamlessly with Norbert Schulz's theories. Crafting strong places, as emphasized by Norbert Schulz, remains a focal point for interior designers aiming to cultivate a sensory connection and thereby fostering meaningful encounters within these spaces. Lopez in 2010 advocates for places that engage all user senses, supporting behavioral goals and sustaining rich experiences. By infusing a creative sense of place within the Mubbening's interior design, the precinct becomes a facilitator of human activities, promoting cultural, social and community renewal within its surroundings. Thus, the placemaking strategies embedded within Mabining's commercial spaces significantly contribute to its success as a creative cluster, actively fostering inner city regeneration. This study highlights the pivotal role of creative clusters in inner city regeneration, notably through the interior designed commercial spaces. Despite employing professional interior designers, the discipline's link to strategies for inner city regeneration remains underappreciated. However, this research presents elements in these strategies that distinctly align with interior design principles, especially evident in successful clusters like the Mabinin precinct. Acknowledging and identifying these unique characteristics within interior design are vital steps in understanding, replicating and fostering similar successful processes observed in thriving creative clusters like Mabinin. It is crucial to recognize these strategies to bridge the gap between disciplines, defining their shared roles in creating a cohesive sense of place and fostering placemaking. Understanding these overlaps and unique interior design attributes offers an opportunity to clarify the interactions between various stakeholders. By recognizing individual contributions, a collaborative effort can emerge to develop design solutions that not only promote successful regeneration nodes within the inner city, but also seamlessly extend a defined sense of place from interior spaces to the broader urban environment. This acknowledgement paves the way for collective efforts aimed at cohesive and impactful urban regeneration where interior design plays a vital and acknowledged role. This slide provides a few references to the work cited in my abstract, this presentation and my upcoming paper. Thank you to the conference organizers and the hosting institutions. I look forward to the presentations and engaging in stimulating conversation around the conference themes. Should you have any questions or feedback, kindly contact me as per the contact details on the slide. Good day.